Today we're going to talk about why I ordered a Stark Varg. So I figured it, that uh, the first uh, full-on motocross e-bike that I would be getting would be a KTM. I um, thought that for quite a while. I figured 2024 models, we were going to have a full-on motocross bike, um, and I'd be ordering that. So I currently have a free ride, as most of my followers know. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the little free ride. I have a lot of fun on it. But this thing has come out of nowhere, and the end goal for me was to always have a motocross-related e-bike. I almost bought an Alta and I think the Alta was a pretty good bike. I was uh, pretty excited to see Josh Schill involved with the Alta experiment, we'll call it. The only thing that really held me back from the Alta was that the company went out of business and when they went out of business, uh, I mean especially where I live out here on an island and just no way to service it, uh, parts are going to be unavailable soon. Now, there's a lot of stuff out there. I'm not trying to diss on the Alta at all, but it's not in business anymore. And the resale value of that thing is going to tank sooner than later. And I really couldn't spend $14,000 on a bike that's not made anymore. So I chose to buy the KTM free ride. As most of my uh, YouTube followers know, um, I've done a bunch of stuff to the free ride to make it what I need it to be. For a while, I thought it might replace my gas bike because I live in such a small place with so few places to ride. But um, it doesn't have the top speed. It really doesn't have the horsepower. And so I, I, it's never going to be a permanent thing for me. It's awesome for my little backyard tracks and, and most of the riding I do. Honestly, I can get away with everything on the free ride. The end game was always something like this, this uh, Stark Varg. So something that I really don't like about the Stark Varg that I figured that we will get in like a KTM or the collaboration with you know Kawasaki and Yamaha or whatever that was um, is a hot swap battery so after listening to Josh Hill it sounds like the battery in the Varg is uh, gonna be a lot more easily changeable than in the Alta the capacity is uh, six kilowatt hours which is basically two kilowatt hours more than the free ride and the bike obviously has a ton more power. I don't need 80 horsepower. Uh, I actually ordered the 60 horsepower version. Uh, we'll see. I might change my mind on that for a couple reasons that I won't go into right now, but um, I'm kind of a 40 horsepower guy. I, just like the perfect rideability, um, tractability, all these sorts of things. Um, with the electric, maybe I could add more horsepower to that and then just smooth out the mapping or whatever in the app. But uh, I don't need 80 horsepower. I don't have any horsepower ego. Riding it in the lower power modes, which is where I'll probably be a lot of the time, um, obviously the battery lasts longer. The more you hold an electric bike wide open, the more you drain it, just like on a gas bike. If you're on the main jet, you suck through the fuel. So Stark is claiming that um, this Varg has uh, the, the fuel capacity of a gas bike, just a, a tank of gas that you could ride a full national on. Um, a lot of people don't know, but pro motocross racers, you burn through a tank of gas in in a moto. I'm not a pro, 
Um, I ride pretty good. I burn through fuel pretty quickly. It doesn't it doesn't take me much longer than a pro moto to burn a tank of gas out of a two stroke. So the fact that uh, the bike has that capacity and they say in the videos you can ride it up to six hours. I completely believe that. I've been on three hour trail rides with the free ride. When you're not sitting there idling and you're not just wasting gas, um, you know, trying to go up some hill climb or stalled out on the trail, you're not on the main jet. You're not using very much juice when you're just sitting there, you know, doing nothing. You're basically using no juice. So anytime you're going downhill, you're coasting, you're not using any juice. Anytime you're sitting, you're not using any juice. So the, the batteries last a long time on trail rides. So I, I, a completely casual ride, I could easily see this thing lasting three, four hours. And that's moving time. A lot of these, um, you know, gas bike ego people, they, they don't realize that they're like, oh, I went out for a six or seven hour ride on my bike. They can never have enough, you know, range. They're not riding for six or seven hours. During that six or seven hours, I bet they're getting, you know, maybe an hour of moving time. They just can't grasp the concepts because they're so wrapped around their ego and they have so little understanding of how anything works that they just don't get it. So moving time on the gas is is what you really judge the range on one of these things and for an everyday rider if the, if their specs are real which i have no reason to believe they'd be lying about it the range is going to be awesome uh, very likely it actually will replace my gas bike um, another thing that um, has kind of attracted me to it is it's it sounds like it'll probably be um uh, like a dual voltage charger so you'll be able to hook it up to american plugs and you'll be able to hook it up to euro plugs i think a lot of people are confused about um the charging time so stark says an hour to two hours i believe that's probably due to what source you're plugging it in if you plug it into an american outlet from dead it's probably going to take two hours if you plug it into a european outlet that's 220 or whatever it's going to take one hour just like the free ride the free ride charges pretty quick and it's hooking into a 220 source or 240. I'm excited by the fact that you can plug it into a 110 source. Um, if let's say I go to a track and I'm gonna do a couple of 30 minute motos, number one, depending on where I'm at, if I'm in sand or something, it probably will just be 40, 45 minutes with me on it. But um, that's that's a lot of time for a weekend warrior. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not even really worried about the, the capacity for me just going for day rides, but I could probably get some sort of little um, inverter generator. Um, who knows? I don't, I don't know the charging capacity and abilities of this thing yet, but get some quiet little inverter and, uh, you know, maybe top up the battery half halfway and let's say I go out and get a full hour and a half of sand motos out of this thing in one day, which is some, some little generator, you know, while I'm taking a break and... Um, that's, I mean, that's all the riding time that I need. I'm, I'm more of a modem guy. I don't need to go 60 miles out into the woods somewhere and uh, anything like that. That's just, that's just not me. Um, you know, I, I would never expect this thing to be some sort of desert racing bike or something. It very much sounds like it could be uh, competitive in something like a cross country race, works race. Um, you're not super wide open on the gas all the time on those things so it sounds like it has the capacity to do that um, i've done a bunch of hour-long cross-country races on uh, just one tank of fuel in uh, two strokes so two gallons of gas topped off so that sounds pretty good to me i would like the hot swap battery but i just don't think it's a, a first world problem that it's going to be a thing for me uh, i think the styling is super cool um, i like the new ktm styling and this looks like very much like they kind of um, mapped the bodywork around that. I don't know. People say it doesn't look like a KTM, but it definitely looks like a KTM, a Honda to me. Um, so I think it looks great. I got the green version. And <laughs> the reason I got the green version instead of my regular, or I guess it's gray, technically forest gray, is that uh, the white color... Uh, that I normally ride is not very incognito. Not very many people have white bikes, so I'm a little bit noticeable. And on an electric bike, I want to be out riding around, and I don't maybe necessarily want to be reported for everything that I'm seen doing. And so uh, 
you know, as long as you're not hurting anything, people just get their panties in a twit these days and just want to turn somebody in for everything. So, I mean, we just got a bunch of Karens in the world. So, I don't know, I got the, the <laughs> darker green colored one. I plan on putting some sort of like camouflage type graphics on it and, you know, just go ride and, and have fun, you know, not worry about uh, other people. You can't hear the damn thing. It sounds like it's quieter than the free ride from the videos. Um, so super stoked that Josh Hill's involved with it because uh, he was uh, helped a lot with the Alta stuff. And um, as uh, a bunch of you know, the, the Hill family was formerly one of my customers. And so I used to sell parts to Josh and his dad and his brother and stuff when, you know, they were on 65s. And Josh was about as tall as my waist. And so it's just, they're a good family. Uh, I really like his... Um, outlook on motorcycles in general he likes to have fun i mean i'm a 41 year old dude i'm not gonna win super crosses anymore i like to to go out and have fun challenge myself you know if i do race i i do like to win but um you know it's it's it got to be realistic here this bike uh, looks awesome um i mean it's got the kyb suspension on it tuned by technical touch i mean Everybody on the planet knows that that KYB suspension's good stuff. And then you know, with a with a professional tuner, um, setting it up, and I imagine that this is kind of a you know ready to race sort of format because it's such a small and new company. So I'm sure it's going to be set up you know more on the the motocross side of valving and stuff. So I'm I'm pumped about that. Um, you can see in the clips, and I'll, I'll put it in the picture in picture here, maybe. Um, you can see the clips, how well the suspension handles with Josh on it. I mean, they, they didn't revalve this thing for him when he showed up, so he didn't have that much testing time on it. So this is probably the stock stuff, and obviously he can ride anything well, but it, it looks really good and balanced in the whoops. Uh, Sebastian Tortelli, you know, he's a world champion. I, I can't imagine that this is this is a crappy setup. So, I'm um, I'm really really pumped about this thing. One thing I don't really really love is the um, the control panel. The I like the idea that a uh, cell phone you know fits in there. Uh, and I left a comment for them, for, for Stark on this, but I would really like to see it, um, be able to pop it under the seat or something like that. Um, not only will that allow you to run a, a bar with a crossbar, but uh, it just seems like in really, really muddy, you know, environments and stuff that just, you know, water and mud and stuff would be all over. It's waterproof, so it doesn't really matter and, and washing and all that stuff, but just getting mud down inside to the display case itself, um, things like that. It would be kind of cool to maybe have it under the seat. I don't really need to adjust settings or whatever. I mean, I'm not pushing buttons on my Android phone when I'm riding my bike on the handlebar, um, you know, except for maybe if I was, uh, you know, trying to control a drone or a camera or something like that. But, um, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I just don't know that I, I need that display in front of me all the time. So maybe they'll offer some sort of cradle that will go somewhere else on the bike. Um, maybe uh, they could have a remote switch where you can operate it with your smartwatch or something like that. You know, I get my, my polar watch on the handlebar uh, so that I can just kind of see my, my data. And I guess that's the point of the smartphone. You'll be able to see your lap times and, and just change stuff on the fly and I'm sure you can throw your heart rate and all that sort of stuff on the screen. If not, I'm sure in the future, um, I left them some suggestions on that too, but, um, so that's, I mean, that's not a big complaint and maybe it'll be the coolest thing I've ever seen, but I, uh, really like the concept. Uh, you know, even the, if you're a trail rider, you've got a full GPS right there. You don't need to buy a separate GPS. You have that smartphone hooked into the bike's battery. So it's always charging and everything and you can go on your trail rides with it. So I don't know. Uh, I think the price point is really fair. Do I love paying $12,000 for motorcycles? No, that's the world we live in. I think in the world that we live in, that's a really reasonable price. It's really not far off from a new 450. And if you think about the maintenance costs on these electric bikes, it's, it's, I mean, it's non-existent. All you do is replace tires. 
Um, this bike's going to have enough power that you'll replace tires and chains and sprockets, but as far as that goes, it's just, it's basically just tires. You just ride these things. Uh, no, I don't think anybody realizes when you ride a lot how expensive oil is. You know, if, if you're riding a two stroke, you have trans oil that I change basically every single ride. So let's say the cheap stuff is eight bucks a quart. I'm, I'm about ready to fly to the mainland and ride my other bike there. It's eight bucks a quart. And now you got premix that's between eight and 15 bucks a quart or a pint, I should say. And you know, that stuff that, that adds up. You got the fuel, which is basically four bucks a gallon if you're just running pump gas. So you've, you've got, uh, you know, two gallons of fuel at a minimum, eight bucks. You've got basically four bucks worth of premix and you got eight bucks worth of, of, you know, transmission oil. Then you've got the filter oil and all this stuff. I mean, these, these things are expensive. And if you ride all the time, you just, you're just incurring massive expense. Plus, you usually got to travel somewhere far away just to ride the damn thing because it's so noisy. So these you can ride around your house if you have some sort of area. You have no maintenance. You don't have to clean the filters or anything. I'm preaching to the choir because you guys follow a lot of you follow me for e-bikes, but uh, this thing is just going to be badass. I'm I'm so stoked. Go in there and. Um, use the computer to to manage the power output and all that i hate engine braking so you know even in like mode one on the free ride i don't like the engine braking on there so i'm just a two-stroke guy as far as the engine braking goes that's why probably why i like riding 250fs and not stuff that's bigger because i chop the throttle and the things are just off the gas <laughs> and I'm all right. I'm still on my way to the corner and I got to get re back on the gas again. It's just, I'm a weekend warrior. I don't get to ride very much. You, you guys watch my videos. I ride on average about once a month and sometimes it's not even that. I think I've, I've ridden like eight hours for in, uh, 2021. I mean, it's, it's like ridiculous. So I just need something that I can hop on and go not worry about and, just not have all the extra expense so i think i think 12 grand is a really fair price on these things i'm super stoked about this thing um seems very very innovative um i left a couple of comments that i would like to see a, a few more guards for it um the battery looks a little bit exposed in the front but i mean i could even just make something there you know cut a piece of background material so that uh little uh, rocks and roost and sticks and stuff aren't just banging up against that battery case but as far as everything else goes i'm 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 really pumped about this thing everything seems real well thought out and um and uh, just you're placed on it i'm i'm stoked so good job stark uh, i'm looking forward to giving you some of my money <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to sell off to pay for it yet because uh, I'm not made of money. But anyway, I think it's rad and I got to have one. So if you guys are interested in e-bikes, uh, that's not going away. I'm still going to be riding the free ride. So don't be bummed and hating on me. Um, I will be riding the free ride until at least December. That's when they say they'll ship my Stark. And who knows, maybe I'll keep the free ride around. Um, I'm likely moving to a different state and I'll just get the free ride street legal. Maybe I just ride the free ride is my commuter and uh or you know girlfriend bike maybe i'll get one of those so anyway um thanks for watching take care you guys